Good day students, uh, welcome to MathWithServe.com. In this installment, we're going to be going over part four, um, actually part six, problems 26 through 30 of the integrated algebra regions for June 2014. Don't forget to visit our website at MathWithServe.com for a wide variety of math tutorials ranging from algebra to calculus. All right, let's take a look at problem 26. So for 26, it says, given that M is green, red, yellow, black, and set N is blue, green, yellow, which set represents M, U, N? Okay, so this um, U right here is a um, notation in sets used to carry out an operation on, on sets. So what does that U mean? Well, that U basically means union. So... What we're being asked to do right here is to unite these two sets. So when you unite these two sets, what will the result be? So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to have set M is green, red, yellow, and black. And then set N has elements blue so right here has elements blue and it has yellow blue yellow and green all right so do you notice how i um, organized the elements of my set what i did is i basically oriented them in such a way that identical elements are in the same column all right and it's very important for you to do this because when you are um, uniting elements of a set, you do not repeat identical elements. And when you're looking for intersection, it's also easy to find the um, elements that are common or identical in both. All right, so for this uh, problem, M uni union N is basically a combination, a union of these two sets without repetition, okay? So these two greens just count as one, green. And then red from set N, M, sorry. And then these two yellows count as one. And then black from set M. And then blue from uh, set N. So this is M union N. And that is option number four. That's the correct answer. Now, what if you were asked, you weren't asked to do this, but what if you were asked to find... Um, Sorry about that. What if you were asked to find the intersection? What if you were asked to find M intersect N? If you wanted to find M intersect N, you, you do it the following way. M intersect N is going to be the elements that are common to the two sets. And inter, the CU is union, and then this right here is intersection. All right? Intersection. What's common in both of them? And you can see the intersection is green because it's common to both and then um yellow is common to both all right so that's going to be the intersection if you want to think about it if you want to relate this to uh oh i put union this right here is intersect if you want to relate this to um arithmetic union can be thought of as finding the lcd of you know two numbers okay you unite the common factors and then intersection can be thought of as the greatest common factor. You find the intersection of common factors. So that's a, a similarity between set operations and um, arithmetic. All right, so our answer is number four, the union of the two sets, basically elements that, you know, are in a combination of both without repetition. Now let's take a look at um, question 27. It says, um, which situation describes a correlation that is not a causal relationship? Okay, so causal relationship basically means, let's say um, you have two things, A and B. If there's a causal relationship, uh, a change in A is going to cause a change in B. Okay, so um, if a change in A has no bearing on, on B at all, then it's not a causal relationship. So that's how um, you want to look at it, okay? So in all these options, we have two things happening here. 
And the, th and the question is, which of them is a situation that is not causal? That is, a change in one of them does not cause the other to change. For option one, we have number of miles walk, walked. That's our A. And then um, we have total calories burned. That's our B. So for option A, the number of miles you walk, does that change the number of calories you burn? The answer is absolutely. The fewer miles you walk, the fewer calories you burn, and then the more miles you walk, the more calories you burn. So this is a causal relationship. Remember, we're looking for what is not, okay? All right, let's look at option B. For B, we have population of a country, and um, we have the census taken every 10 years, basically the frequency of the census. Is this a causal relationship? Does the number of people determine if the census is taken every 10 years? Like if the population grows, does that mean there is going to be a census or not? If the population falls, is there going to be a census or not? How about if the population is the same? Is there going to be a census or not? The answer is no. Regardless of the variation in population, every 10 years, what happens? The census is taken. So the census is dependent on the calendar. Every 10 years, you do the census regardless of the population of a country. So this is not a causal relationship because the change in and population has nothing to do with conducting uh, the census. All right, change in population is independent of the frequency at which the census is conducted. Now let's look at option three. The number of hours on a TV. Let's hope that the TV is not battery operated. That's A. And then the amount of electricity used. That's B. Now, if you watch a little TV, does that affect your light bill? Absolutely. Your electric bill, uh, fewer electricity is used, right? And then if you watch a lot of TV, then um, you use more electricity. So this is a causal relationship because the change in the number of hours affects the amount of electricity used or it changes the amount of electricity used. Option four, the speed of a car. That's the that's A, and then B is the number of hours it takes to travel, that's B. So if you drive fast, does that affect how many hours you spend? Absolutely. Remember the, the formula distance equals rate times time? This shows that there is a direct relationship between the, the rate and, well, let me show you the relationship. Um, distance is rate times time. That means the rate is distance over time. So there's an inverse relationship. I'm sorry, inverse relationship between the rate, the speed, and the time. If you drive faster, you take less time. If you drive slower, you take more time. Okay? So this is a causal relationship because change in speed definitely causes the number of hours it takes to travel to change also. So the only one that's not a causal relationship here is option number two. Okay. All right, let's take a look at problem 28. It said a school offers three classes of math and two classes of science, all of which meet at different times. What is the total number of ways a student can take a math class and a science class? So we have two classes. The student is taking two classes. So what we're going to do is we're going to make two spots. Spot one is for class one, class. No, actually, let's name the classes. The first class is math. The second class is science. So the student is taking math and science. So that end in counting is represented by multiplication. So how many different ways, how many different classes are there for math? You have, what does it say? There are three math classes, so there's three. And then how many science classes are there? There's two. So the total number of um, ways a student can take a class is simply three times two, which is six. This is just one way of, of doing the, the problem, okay? Another way you can do this is just by using probability tree, which is a little bit longer. So you say, oh, there are three math classes. How about we call them, this is our start, how about we call them M1, M2, 
or M3. All right. After taking an, a math class, you have two choices of science classes. You have science one or science two. And in M2, you have science one or science two. And in M3, you have science one or science two. All right, so how many different combination of classes can you have in this scenario? So you can have M1 science one, M1 science two, M2 science, I mean, math two science one, math two science two, or math three science one, math three science two. So how many different unique combinations do we have? Let's list them. We have M1 S1, M1 S2, M2 S1, M2 S2, M3 S1, and M3 S2. How many? One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six different ways, six possible classes, combination of classes that you can have. So this is another way of doing it. Um, there's also another way, but I don't want to show you, I don't want to confuse you, but you can use any of these two methods to generate the answer. Obviously, this is the best method for a lot of combinations. Let's say there were five different classes, then this would be a mess. You just have to multiply the number of ways, and that's the fastest way to do it. Our answer is going to be option number two. Okay, number 29 says the expression x minus 7 over 9 minus x squared is defined when x is, is undefined, sorry, it's undefined when x is. So what causes an expression to be undefined? An expression is undefined when the denominator is equal to zero. So what we're just going to do is solve the equation 9 minus x squared equals zero. Any values of x that satisfy this equation will cause the expression to be undefined. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this. We can um, subtract, we can um, add x squared to both sides. And I use the reflexive property of equality to express this equation as x squared equals 9. And then we take the square root of both sides. That yields x equals, actually, absolute value of x equals 3. And then we have absolute value of the same thing as plus or minus x equals 3. Divide both sides by plus or minus 1. Uh, and then you have x equals plus or minus 3. Okay, so x is 3 and negative 3. These are the solutions to um, what causes the denominator to be 0. And if the denominator is 0, the expression is undefined. So we can clearly see that our answer is option number 2. All right, let's take a look at uh, the last question in this uh, review installment, problem 30. Um, it says, what is the product of 1.5 times 10 to the second power? Um, and 8.4 times 10 to the third power. Okay, so we have 1.5 times 10 to the second power, um, and then we're multiplying it by 8.4 times 10 to the third. Now, if we use the associative and uh, commutative property of multiplication, let's use the uh, commutative property first. So we can commute the uh, multiplicands, you can write this as 1.5 times 8.4 times 10.2 times 10, I mean 10 to the second times 10 to the third. And then using the associative property of multiplication, however you associate the multiplicand, it doesn't change the product, you can associate it like this. All right, so let's go ahead and use our calculator to figure out what the product of 1.5 and um, 8.4 are, so we have, oh, I already did it, 1.5 times 8.4 is 12.6, so we have 12.6 times, now how do you multiply exponents with the same base? Using the property, the product property of exponents, when you're multiplying exponents with the same base, you add the powers, okay, so it's going to be 2 plus 3, which is 5. So let's look at our answer, is our answer option number 2? The answer is no. It says scientific notation. So for scientific notation, the number in front has to be um, less than between um, 9 and 
between it has to be between 10 and 0 okay it has to be between 10 and 0 so that's 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 the re, that's the requirement or in other words it should be just one digit it could be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 okay it has to be um, one digit must be in front of the decimal point here we have two digits so how do we fix that well uh, remember when you're moving a decimal point if you move it forward that means you're going to have to be adding to this exponential value right here so we need to move the, this decimal point forward once that's equivalent to dividing this expression by 10 so if you divide this expression by 10 you must multiply this expression by 10 so since you moved it forward one place you have to add one to this power to compensate for that move all right so your answer is going to become 1.26 times 10 to the sixth power. Because I moved the decimal point forward once, I have to add a 1 here. So our answer is option number 3. Okay, option 3 is our answer. Okay, so dealing with um, scientific notation is definitely a pain. But since you can use your calculator for this exam, let me show you how you can do this with a TI-83 plus, okay? So first thing you want to do is you deal with scientific notation. So you go to your mode, change your calculator to the scientific format, number format. Um, and then I'm going to enter these numbers, the product of these two um, numbers in scientific notation. So you're going to enter it 1.5, right? 1.5 there is a way you can um, enter it here. So we're gonna do uh, 1.5, 1 1.5 times 10 to the second power. This is not a standard language, I'm just writing it like this because it works also. 8.4 times 10 to the third power. All right, uh, and then enter. And the answer is 1.26 times 10 to the 6. So this E basically means times 10 to the. So we can clearly see that the answer is 1.26 times 10 to the 6th power, option number 3. All right, so you can definitely use your calculator to, to do this problem. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. I really appreciate it. Feel free to subscribe to our channel for updates to other cool tutorials such as this. And you can also follow us on Facebook or Twitter. More clips can be found on math.serve.com and also feel free to post a comment to let us know what you think about this presentation. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.